I want to ask uh, or introduce our speaker, who is uh, Patrick Clement from Wichita. He's a good friend of mine. He's a good friend of Morgan's and Dennis and everybody that uh, has an interest in exaggeration postcards, Kansas postcards, uh, photography history, and all of that. We're lucky to have Patrick living here in Wichita now, and uh, so we're pleased. He used has lived in different parts, Greensburg and different uh, towns around Kansas, but we hope that he stays here for a while. He's uh, spent a lot of time and effort researching and traveling and and getting to know family members of uh, F.D. Connard in, in Garden City, Kansas. And it was during that time that he learned about uh, our uh, the topic of today's presentation, which is uh, William Bill Kirsch, K-I-R-C-H. He was another photographer from Western Kansas who also made postcards. So let me turn it over to uh, Patrick now, and we look forward to this presentation to learn more about Mr. Kirsch. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Mr. Otterway. Hi, everybody. Nice to see you. Um, some of you may have been at my, um, I did give a presentation on Frank Connard at a show, I think two years ago. It wasn't last year. Maybe it was the year before the year before that. Um, so if you were at that, that presentation, you know, I have a very narrow, uh, collecting, uh, area. Um, William Kirsch is one of those, of uh, the very few photographers that I, that I collect and take, take a great interest in. So I'm, very happy to um, to give a presentation today. Just a couple of pieces of house cleaning, um, uh, housekeeping. I do. I'm going to run fairly brisk, okay? So because I don't like my presentation to go too long, um, but uh, I really like a longer Q and A. So if you have questions, please put them in the chat, and then we will get to them when I'm finished. And I am more than happy to return to some of the other slides if if anybody wants to spend a little more a little more time on them. I'm trying to condense a man's entire life into a 15 to 20 minutes, so I like to be to be pretty brisk. Okay, so uh, I am going to give a presentation on William Kirch. He's he's a very interesting photographer to me. He is a lifelong photographer. As far as I can tell, he never did anything else but be a photographer his entire life. He operated mostly in Western Kansas, although in the presentation he spent some time in South Dakota. Um, I, I'm going to admit something here that there is no amazing, um, you know, killer part of his career. He was a blue collar working class photographer. I find him very interesting because of that fact. I think we all spend a lot of time on the schmuckers of the world and the FD Connards of the world that had some kind of pinnacle in their career. Um, Bill had a couple of highlights, but for the most part, he just worked. He created a body of work uh, um, up until the day that he died. And sometimes I think it's these, these types of people and photographers that I find the most interesting because sometimes they slip through the cracks. Um, it's about his life. So indulge me. I go on a couple of, um, aside, I go take a couple of detours because of his, I'm basically um, exploring his life. So I uh, hope you'll indulge me about that. It's usually pretty, pretty interesting stuff if I do that. Um, so this is Bill here. Um, again, Bill was a lifelong photographer. This is a picture, uh, somebody, I, I believe his wife took him as a, a promotional postcard. So this is a postcard that exists, um, of Bill. Uh, Bill, it was an immigrant. He was the, uh, he was born in New York city. So I did the math. It's very likely that he was conceived, uh, on the ship. Uh, and was born very quickly after arriving in New York City. This is his family in Kaiserslautern, Germany. 
His father, Adam, is the very small boy on the right who left his family, a very strict religious family, uh, and came to America. They um, uh, settled in Kansas um, around 1880. They came out on land grants and settled in the Rush Center, which at one time was called Walnut, Kansas, which is now called Rush Center in, um, in uh, Rush County. This is the earliest photo I can find of the Kirsch home. This is their farm. I think it was taken around 1904, uh, around 1904, 1905 by William Kirsch. You can see he's got his stamp there um, uh, as a photographer in Rush Center. It was a very, very modest farm. Um, and there's a dugout in a building. Um, they were, they were, uh, I believe it was three boys and two, two uh, daughters, four boys and two daughters. This is the Kirsch family. Um, Bill is on the upper right here with this very thick mustache. Um, this is his father, Adam, his two sisters, his mother, Margarita, and his three brothers. Um, this was also taken uh, at, a, at Will's studio, although um, I'm not sure who was actually pulling the, pulling the trigger, but somebody did it. Um, these two gentlemen are his brothers. So um, uh, Fred on the left and Henry on the right. Fred is a big part of the story, so we're going to come back to Fred, uh, who always has this terrific mustache. Um, a little bit of an aside, um, just as you're researching somebody, something interesting pops out. Um, uh, Henry, uh, um, uh, I'm sorry, um, yeah, Henry on the right was a member of the Rough Riders and uh, went and fought with Roosevelt in Cuba. Um, this came up at auction, which I missed, which is a big regret of my life. This was his pension papers. Um, he is possibly in this photo somewhere, who knows? Um, but uh, he is absolutely a rough writer and was listed in the muster list. But what I think is super interesting, um, he went down to Cuba and fought with Roosevelt and when the um, president of the United States, uh, future president wrote a book about it, they did spell his name wrong. So uh, he was listed as Henry Kira, uh, a corporal. But um, so I can only imagine the heartbreak of rushing to the bookstore to see your name in print and finding that they had misspelled your name. Um, so uh, back to William, uh, 1902. William is working uh, for E.C. Wallace, who was a very well-respected photographer in Western Kansas. Uh, uh, Mr. Wallace teaches Bill how to use a photography uh, camera and uh, the chemistry. And by 1904, uh, Will buys his railroad car. So you can, uh, I can often find Wallace photo car photos stamped and then Kirch photo card and they're on the same material and they're using all the same same chemistry um uh he start his very very first job uh that same year is his brother fred the man with the wonderful mustache buys the uh, rush center breeze newspaper so this is a photo of the rush center breeze uh, uh newspaper office and William's first job is working for his brother, taking photos for the newspaper. Um, he uh, takes large format photos, but at some point they are they're published as postcards. So this is cutting ice on the Walnut Creek uh, near Rush Center. This is a photo postcard. This is a, a I'm sorry. This is a photo. This is a postcard with a photo taken by William Kirsch. This is some of his earliest work um, that I can find. Um, they're unsigned and unmarked, but I've done the research, so I was able to, to connect them. This is really interesting. This is, again, an original photo taken by William Kirsch on the right, and then later the postcard that it was used in on the left, published by the Rush Center Breeze newspaper. There was even a promotion where you could get the 15 views of the county or something if you got a subscription or something. Um, very, very interesting. Fishing on Walnut Creek. 
Uh, this is another one uh, that is in very rough shape, so apologize for that, but this is a photo of a log cabin taken by William Kirsch and published by his brother, Fred. After that, he, he buys the photo car and he is traveling around Western Kansas. Um, between 1904 and 1911, he's a traveling photographer and this map shows all the places where Bill worked in that time, in that six to seven year time period. He's in the photo car, um, he's moving from town to town, he's in town for a little bit, he's out of town for a little bit. Um, but he, you can clearly see he's got he's got a zone that he is uh, working pretty consistently in, and I I find it very, like, traveling photographers are very interesting to me um, uh, in part because at this time they're sort of like um, snake oil salesmen. They're coming into a town, they're basically photographing everybody they can, and then exiting as quickly as they have arrived. Uh, and there's a, a, a cycle of photographers coming in and out of town. Oh, we've done this. This is the new guy. So um, Bill is definitely part of this, um, this sort of a, a migration. This is the only photo I can find of the inside of the car. So this is a postcard taken of some modern woodmen. Um, I don't, I've never found an exterior photo. Uh, there's a very grainy photo, copy of a copy that kind of shows his car in Mullenville, but I, I'm 100% sure that this is the interior of the car. Um, it's not particularly exciting, but uh, very exciting um, to me. If you're, if you have anybody sees, finds a Kirsch um, photo car postcard, please uh, send it to me and I will uh, put you, I will give you early retirement. Um, uh, so he's a traveling photographer. In 1911, uh, his brother Fred sells his newspaper and uh, moves to Wood, South Dakota and starts the Millette County Pioneer. Now, I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna come back to brother Fred and South Dakota, which will be part of our story um, uh, in, in later part of the presentation. It's also a big year because he marries his lovely wife, May B. Soar. She is in Larned, Kansas. Um, she is a school teacher and they have a very short courtship. Um, and they're married in 1911 and in 1913, they decide that they're gonna settle in Buckland, Kansas. So I, again, this traveling photography business that's happening a lot in Western Kansas, it's very interesting to me, especially when those photographers start trying to settle in towns because there's kind of a musical chairs situation happening where it's like, oh, who's been in town the longest? Um, who's coming into town? Who's leaving town? Uh, Bill uh, settles in Buckland, Kansas is the first stop. They actually buy a home there. They settle there. The photo car is there. Unfortunately, uh, there is already a traveling photographer who is trying to settle there by the name of uh, Harry Givens. Um, Mr. Givens, from all accounts, was not a especially pleasant man and certainly did not like this uh, other photographer muscling in, this is a Givens card, muscling in on his, uh, his town. Um, on a little bit of a side note, the Givens studio still exists in Buckland, Kansas. The building, the, I'll spoil it for you, uh, Bill Kirsch leaves and Givens stays in Buckland and builds a photography business there. His building is still there. 10 years ago, I spotted this um, window and I said, oh, that's a photo studio. And it uh, turns out it is Givens building. Um, and then um, not that long ago, I was able to go inside and purchase this hand painted photo backdrop, which is a Givens, uh, 19 teens Givens hand painted uh, backdrop that he used in the studio, which was very exciting to me. Um, it took me 10 years of polite begging to, to make that happen. So congratulations to me. Um, however, uh, back to our story, Mr. Givens is not a fan of Bill Kirsch at all. And obviously I'm not there, but it plays out in the local newspaper. Uh, Mr. Givens goes hard at Bill Kirsch. Um, the man who's bidding for your future business can give you more for your money than the fellow anxious to make a killing quick and move on. I mean, it 
feels relatively mild in 2023, but this is scandal at the I mean, this is very harsh words at the time. Um, this is another one. He calls uh, Bill Kirsch a peddler more proficient at butting in than delivering the goods. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll say this, that uh, there is no, um, there is no uh, advertisement of Bill Kirsch going back at Mr. Givens. So this is all coming from Mr. Givens. And Bill, I'm assuming, is quietly fuming or trying to, to take the high road. Um, this is a great one. We sell our skills and training, not furniture and freak backgrounds. So drink that in. Um, but Bill is doing very well. Um, and uh, he is uh, working. He's still He doesn't leave Buckland right away. He stays there. He actually buys other studios in the area. Um, by 1916 and 1917, he owes studios in Buckland, Mullenville, Ford, Coldwater, and Greensburg, which is all in the same sort of general area. He's doing a lot of photo postcards at this time. He's doing a lot of a lot of work. Um, he's doing well. He seems to be, uh, this is sort of the busiest that he ever is in his entire career. He's traveling to his studios. He has people working for him. Um, he takes some very interesting cards in and around Greensburg. Um, this is a great photo. And it's not a particularly exciting, uh, you know, framed photo, but Bill is in a very early airplane taking a photo of Greensburg from the air, 1919. Um, he is doing terrific work here. And this is, these are some of the cards that are, you can find more often around the area. So they must have done very well that there's, there's a number of them printed. This is another great one from Coldwater. So Coldwater, not a lot of uh, photo postcards from there. There's some rodeo around Sun City that's close to Coldwater, but this is one of the better, uh, most more detailed cards you can, you can find of Coldwater, Kansas. Uh, I've actually been on the roof that Oddfellows Lodge is now Dave's Pizza. If you're ever in cold water, stop in and grab yourself a slice. Um, I actually lived in cold water for, for a little bit. Um, and around that time, he also purchases his first panoramic camera. So uh, it's not a postcard, but Bill gets into the panoramic photo business around this time, and it is the pinnacle of his ability as a photographer. Um, he's one of the best Midwest panoramic photographers I've ever seen. Um, it's the medium where he really excels. So this is a race in Dodge City. He's hired by somebody to come and take this photo. It is absolutely his most notable work. Um, this is a, a very well-known for the area uh, photo of Greensburg, Kansas. Um, <clears throat> Bill is a very popular man that everybody seems to really like in Greensburg. He takes this from the top of the water tower um, and uh, the, the title of the presentation uh, came from um, an, an article in the newspaper saying that uh, our photographer Bill Kirsch, the very rotund gentleman, climbed to the top of the water tower to take this photograph. And again, Bill was not known to be the most nimble or athletic man. So I can only imagine the the sight of this very large man climbing rung by rung with a camera strapped to his back up to the top of this water tower. It must have been quite a sight. Um, there's two little interesting notes here. One is, this is a one of, uh, on the left is one of uh, Bill Kirch's cameras that was on display at the uh, Finney County Museum. So I know that there's two panoramic cameras that exist that are his. Um, uh, they're both in private collections. Finney County did a presentation and showed that. And then um, on the right is, uh, this is the first mention of uh, of Bill Kirch working with Connard Studios, which was, uh, again, my guy from Garden City. There were three Connard brothers. I believe this one's from Garden City, but it also could have been Larnard. Um, the Kirches 
and the Connards both are from Rush Center, Kansas. So I can only imagine that they certainly know of each other, definitely know of their photo businesses and have kept, kept tabs on each other. So this is an exciting thing to find that um, it seems like Bill was hired to do some panoramic photos, home portraiture for the Connard studio. So that was that's a very exciting find for me. Um, uh, around this time, he continues to work. This is these are terrific photos of um, threshing scenes in Mullinville. Um, you can tell it's a panoramic photo, and these are eight by ten prints. They're sort of stacked one on top of each other. This is one of the Rockefeller Ranch, which uh, also becomes a postcard. So um, the photo on the bottom is a pretty common postcard that you would find of of the Rockefeller Ranch in Belvedere, um, in Belvedere, Kansas. Um, this is a, a ve three very interesting photographs. The t these two of mules uh, flung uh, two miles by the tornado in 1915, and this is the postcard he makes of that at that same time. Um, so this is a, a farmer, assuming the farmer that maybe owns these these uh, horses. I believe he's pointing a stick um, towards town. And then there are two uh, deceased uh, mules. So I'll go back one, just so you can see, this is the same scene. And if you can see towards the sort of center of the photograph, those are the two cows, or those are the two horses that eventually he comes to photograph here. Um, so, so a couple of interesting things. Um, this is Bill and May, they, have, they are married. Uh, still, they, they were eight years married with no children. So I will leave that up to you to decide why that was. Um, it, everything is a guess, so who knows why, but very unusual for people in this era to have no children after being married for so long, unless there is a specific reason. Um, they sure seem very happy here. So let's just keep this these happy, this happy couple in your mind as we move through the next couple of slides. This is B.A. Seidner. He is a 60-year-old man, a widower, and he is a, one of the richest men in Mullinville, Kansas, which is uh, around where uh, the Kirsches live. They are working in Mullinville, Kansas very often. Um, uh, May is 30 and B.A. is 60. He is what is the equivalent of maybe $10 million at that time. He's a very, very rich man with multiple children already. His wife's passed. He's a single man. I believe this is a Kirsch panoramic of the Seidner house and barn. Um, it's not signed Kirsch, but I find it very difficult to believe that anybody other than William takes this photo. Um, uh, so that's a little bit of a connection there. In uh, 1919, um, this ad runs in the local newspaper, all parties are hereby warned I will no longer be responsible for bills contracted by my wife after December 23rd, 1919, which I think gets us to a bit of nastiness here. And it isn't long before May and B.A. Seidner elope to Montana. So um, Bill is, uh, is out a wife, fortunately. Mr. Seidner uh, is doing well though. So he is ha good for him, very happy for him. So this moment, this very bit of, this bit of unpleasantness, and I can only assume it is unpleasant based on the tenure of these, this advertisement and uh, I think common sense. Um, this isn't a great moment for him in his life or his career. It's a pivotal moment. It's going to change his entire life. Um, no kids, married eight years. His wife left him for a very, very well-to-do man in the area. He's also operating five studios at this time. He's, as far as his business output, he's at the top of his game um, and unfortunately has a what seems to be some personal drama in his life. Um, he is going to, from this moment on, he's going to live another 25 years and he's going to work another 25 years. Um, and he never, he never gets remarried. Um, he randomly takes a trip to Long Beach, California, maybe to just clear his head, who knows? 
uh, in the spring of 1921. This is a very unusual Kirch photo because it's of Long Beach, California. He was there on vacation and apparently brought his camera with him. Now this gets in, he, when he comes back, it gets into a very, very interesting part of his career here. Um, he is uh, living in Dighton. He moves back to Dighton. Uh, all of his photography studios are sold um, and all of his work has slowed down. He sells off all of his studios. He takes a vacation to California and he comes back to Dighton. Um, and this is the period of his time where he starts working for Frank Conard in Garden City, which to me is a very exciting part of his career. Um, and he makes panoramics of houses, farms, farmers. I just want to break down this photo very quickly about why it's exciting to me. I hope that this isn't boring to anybody. I see both of the photographers work here. So I see Bill Kirsch's technical skill with the panoramic camera. And then I also see the mise-en-scene, if I could be a little pretentious, of Frank Conard at work. If this said, didn't say Kirsch and Conard on it and it didn't say Healy, Kansas, I would look at that and I see Frank Conard's work in here. The way the people are positioned, it's slightly whimsical. Everything is much closer. Everything is really spaced out correctly. This is a very exciting photo to me because I see both of those men in it, which I think is, is again, is very, very, very exciting. Um, and I, I think that um, I, I can't speak to the friendship of the two men. They are from the same town. They are roughly the same age and they are both in the photography business. I can't imagine them not being friendly or friends with each other. Um, I basically pooped my pants when I found this photo. Um, literally, which is a photo, a Christmas photo from 1928 of the Conard Studios. Um, Frank Conard is this gentleman third from the left, uh, looking down at his wife, Mabel. Um, these are other employees. Uh, his son is in the center here and Bill Kirsch is over on the lower right um, with this sort of upturned haircut um, looking slight with slightly awkward hands. This is very exciting again for me as a person who studied uh, the Conard Studios and Kurt Studio and seeing them together in one photo is, is very, very exciting. Um, it was a super, it was a super fun um, discovery. So Bill is like flopping around. He's kind of just like not doing anything especially exciting. He's making some good panoramics. He tries his hand at the exaggeration postcard, which I think we can all agree is maybe one of the worst postcards ever produced. <laughs> um, it's not an exaggeration under any terms. He is trying and failing miserably, uh, which is why I love it, by the way, because I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not trashing it. Um, this is definitely a, a, a Bill Kirsch uh, exaggeration, not a very good one. He also uh, did this one, which again, not, um, not great. Now, again, um, you could, creativity and beauty is in the eye of the beholder. This is exciting to me because I know Bill and his work and where they fell in his career. But again, uh, also very, very hard to find because they weren't, he, he didn't mass produce them because I don't think that they were very successful or very popular. Remember how I mentioned his brother uh, had, a, had, a, had a newspaper in Rush Center, uh, opens a newspaper in Wood, South Dakota. Uh, Bill moves there um, and starts working in and around South Dakota around his brother um, and um, uh, starts working for four of the major photo and postcard producers in South Dakota for a very short period of time. Um, it's around uh, 1929 um, and he starts making, uh, working for um, sort of the big producers in the area. Um, if you're if you're ever ever familiar with South Dakota real photos around Deadwood and around the Badlands, this looks sort of familiar. There's many versions of this. Uh, Bill is working for Rise in Rapid City. So if anybody is a Rise uh, studio uh, collector, um, they were a very big studio. He's doing photos for them. 
This is a, a Bill Kirsch uh, uh, O'Neill. So he's working for O'Neill. Again, if anybody does South Dakota, they know that these are very familiar names. Uh, and he also works for Haynes Studio. So this is a really lovely view of um, uh, Yellowstone, the Yellowstone River that um, Bill takes while he's in South Dakota. Um, it's an interesting period in his career um, because he's, I'm not going to say he's not inspired, but I feel like he's working, he's making some good work, but I don't see anything extraordinary happening. I feel like he's working, and that's not bad. There's nothing wrong with being a working photographer, mm -hmm. but I think his most creative part of his life is, is certainly over by this time. Um, this is another very interesting and very unusual card that he took of a geyser. Um, this is a, a postcard that he took while he was in um, South Dakota. And also, he does start numbering cards around this time, which I think is very interesting. By the time he's done um, in South Dakota and moves back to Dighton um, in 1936, uh, he pretty much, his work is pretty much done. Again, I, he's, he's doing a lot of postcards at this time, which are fairly common to find. So they must have been reasonably popular. Um, but to me, they are not inspired in, under any circumstances. Um, there's a couple of gems, but they're sort of more like landmark photos. Here's this, here's that. I don't feel a lot of passion in the work at this time. Um, again, he's out of a divorce. He's moved back from South Dakota. I feel like he's sort of working to pay the bills. Again, maybe I'm... Maybe I'm uh, putting that on there. There are a couple of interesting um, gems in this time. This is a photo of the Inman Brothers Flying Circus that uh, that, that I shared with, with um, Hal and Alan earlier. There's a couple of very interesting things maybe you haven't noticed about this photo that makes it slightly unusual. Um, everybody is looking at something very interesting off camera. So Bill is not photographing the interesting thing. He's photographing everybody looking at it, which I think is uh, very unusual. Um, uh, um, but again, there's a, there's a couple of gems um, hidden in here. Um, and again, they are uninspired in my humble opinion. Um, he's sort of, again, I, I don't, this is definitely a refinery in the Burton, Kansas oil field. But this is a photo of some grass with a building in the distance. So it doesn't feel especially inspired to me. Bill Kirsch dies in 1944 in Dighton. He's 66 years old. He's been living in a rooming house. Um, he has no studio anymore. There's a story um, in the Dighton, um, it, there's a, the Dighton uh, Historical Museum, the Lane County User, put, it did a pamphlet where they, they have this story of how Bill Kirsch was out taking a panoramic on a farm of a farmstead and doesn't feel well and gets brought to the hospital and dies of a heart attack. I don't buy into that story necessarily in part because by the time he goes, he comes back from South Dakota, Bill doesn't actually have his panoramic camera anymore. It's at the Conard studio, which is why it survives. Uh, there is a story about um, after Bill dies, the rooming house that he's staying in, um, uh, the landlord uh, goes in and it's filled with photos and postcards and negatives and camera equipment and throws it all in the trash, um, uh, including cameras and gear and personal items and just clears the room out. In 19, around 1940 in the census, he writes that he makes about $100 a month in income. So um, um, he dies in a rooming house. So this is my friend Bill. He is a working class photographer that uh, worked from um, 1904 until he died in, in 1944. He did 40 years worth of photography in Western Kansas and South Dakota. Um, he is a very, very interesting man in part because he is so uninteresting. Um, there's a lot for me to still learn about uh, Bill because he pieced stuff together. I think that he sort of exemplifies 
a very specific kind of photographer that maybe we have in our collections, but maybe don't spend enough time thinking about. And so I would just sort of challenge everybody. Um, I, I guess I, because I have such a narrow collecting view, I tend to work from the person to the cards as opposed to the cards down. So um, uh, I, I like to look at the person's life and then reflect on how that affected their work, not the other way. And maybe we can do that a little bit more. Every photo postcard we own was taken by somebody. And I think that there's a lot of interesting stories still left to discover. Um, so with that, that is the end of my presentation. Thank you again. Um, and I believe we will open, I guess, to a Q&A and thank you very much. Thank you, Patrick. Um, Hal Ottaway uh, has, has put up an interesting question. If you go back to the farmers in the fields uh, image, he asks um, whether these farmers were in the field were sitting on something or were they kneeling or do you have any sense that uh, this was, well, was really seriously posed or composed? Yes, uh, there's no doubt in my mind this is per, this is composed this way, arguably by Frank Conard, not by Bill Kirsch. I have a gut feeling that they are both there this day. They're probably kneeling down because I think Frank has a fun idea that it would be fun to maybe make the wheat look taller than it is. Um, I can't really tell. Again, if you just look at it, you're thinking maybe these guys are standing and that wheat is all the way up to their shoulders. But I have a feeling is that maybe they're on, they're kneeling to make it look like the wheat is deeper. Again, I'm guessing. I, I would agree with that because look at the wheat in comparison to the wheels on the tractor. Ex that's exactly, exactly it. So that's why I see... I see Frank in this photo because I don't really, I don't, you don't see that with William's other work. Uh, so yeah, it's what a, what a hoot. I mean, again, it's, it's an exciting photo. Okay. Ashley, you, I, I think that takes care of your question about whether they were standing or sitting. Oh, Hal's question. Yep. Well, I um... actually had something afterwards. Is it oh, okay. know whether she was, they were standing. I thought or it was really tall week. But no, that, that makes sense. <laughs> okay, that's it for what uh, people have posted, but there are other questions. Uh, we got room for a lot, so uh, throw in your, uh, your, your questions. Morgan, uh, you, you were talking about some of the items in your Kirsch collection. Can you add? First time I ran into Kirsch as a photographer when I was looking over my wife's family's photos. And in 1925, he took his panoramic ca uh, camera to Plains, Kansas, which is south of Dodge City and near Liberal. And he took panoramic photos in Plains, Kansas. He took one of all the wheat trucks going in at harvest to the co-op elevator. And then he went out to my wife's grandfather's farm where he had invented the one-way disc plow for wheat. And he was building them on his farm. And he took a picture of the farm with all the parts on there and the completed plows and the angel family house and their barn. So we have a picture by Kirst of the production of one-way disc plows on the farm of Charlie Angel in Plains, Kansas. Then I got acquainted with him because of I was also researching Conard. And I have about uh, seven panoramic photos by Conard and Kirch. They're just great photos showing harvesters, tractors, uh, farms. They're just amazing. And uh, then uh, Patrick and I've talked about, you know, when we went to, went to Dighton. And so we moved around and there's some, pictures, there's some uh, descriptions in the newspaper about he had a photo car. And I didn't see where Patrick has a pictured that I've never seen one but he outfitted his car some way so that it was basically a traveling photography studio and he would, took that from town to town to town so he was a very uh, I have w one photo from Conard and uh, 
Kirch. It looks like it was taken from the water tower in Lakin, Kansas, and it shows a panoramic view of uh, Lakin, Kansas. So as Patrick said, this guy was very interesting. And uh, I agree with Patrick that when he got in the postcard business, they were not very inspired. Uh, they really uh, were not shot very well. And it's amazing that he was such a wonderful photographer with his uh, panoramic camera. And then he, I agree with Patrick, he lost his inspiration when he went to Dighton and, and, he, and went into uh, real photo uh, postcards. Okay. Uh, Katie Clark wants to know, uh, Patrick, how did you get interested in this particular photographer in the first place? Do you have a background in photography? So I, I didn't introduce myself this time, uh, but I um, have, uh, I've worked in the film and TV business. Uh, and uh, I have my undergrad from film and television for University of Kansas. And then I got my master's degree at Columbia University in New York in film directing uh, and mm. screenwriting. And uh, when I, I came to Kansas in 2009, uh, working for the TV show about after the tornado in Greensburg. Um, and I think, you know, I never really took an interest in photography because I'm from a city. So I'm from Boston and I lived in Los Angeles and went to school in New York. But rural American photography got me very interested in, um, in photography in general. And then uh, I, for a brief time, I was the editor of a newspaper in rural Kansas. And so I had access in, in Greensburg and had access to their history, like their records and old papers. And just started to, and that's where I discovered Frank Conard was there had been an article written about him. And then uh, as I was researching Frank Conard, stumbled on this guy, Bill, who seemed like, quite frankly, kind of a little bit of a loser, kind of like a George Costanza type. Maybe it was just the way that he looked. Um, and I was just like, who is this guy? And he's also, I mean, I don't know if I've ever seen another panoramic photographer in our region. Like, I'm sure there may be one, but I've never seen somebody not, and I mean, West Kansas. I don't mean like Topeka. There's a bunch of people that were doing it in Kansas City and Topeka and, and in that side, but West of Wichita, um, who's, who was doing rural scenes I'd never seen. So it was very interesting um, and just uh, started to, to dig a little. Okay. Dennis McBurney wants to says, great uh, presentation. Thanks for including the photo with the radio slash PA truck at the air show. Could that have been uh, one of Connor's trucks that we didn't know about? Okay, so I guessed, I mentioned this to Hal and Alan when we were on, that this is a public announcement car. I can't see a name on it, but I do know that Frank had his public announcement business at the same time. They knew each other. You can put two and two together, but I can't definitively say. It doesn't look like the ones that we have other photos of. Um, and it is a little unusual that it wouldn't say Connard on it because Frank loved to put his name on everything. You know, everything was Connard, whatever. Um, it very well could be, though. So who knows? Okay. Um, Hal Holloway was uh, interested in what was the size of the panorama views? Were they a yard long or, or how? what were they originally? Most of the ones that I've seen are half yards. So they're not super duper duper long. The longest one maybe is the Greensburg one I've seen as a yard print. Um, there was one, let me just go back here. There was one of these that was hanging in the courthouse that was cropped differently than this one. So it's possible that they did, that he did do some yard longs, but I've never really seen them that long though, rarely. Sometimes they're quarter, quarter, half, quarter or half I've seen them. Morgan Williams, what what is the size of your family uh, uh, panorama? Just roughly, are they like eighteen inches long or so, or longer? Yeah, the the panoramic views are really pretty standard size. The ones that Connor did, and uh, 
the only two panoramic photographers I know about in Western Kansas, as Patrick said, would be uh, Pop Connard and uh, and Kirsch. And then at one time, they got together. Yeah, they're uh, yeah they're about uh, eight inches tall, and I'd say they're eighteen inches wide. Right. Andrew Cunningham says that uh, did did Bill produce any of the panoramic images as double width uh, real photos, and did they ever have photo uh, postcard backs? The only one I've ever seen that was a double panoramic there is a um, there's a Belvedere uh, card that's a printed card. I've never seen it as a real photo that has two of Bill's panoramics, one on top of the other. Um, otherwise, no, I've never seen a real photo postcard of two of them. I, they may exist. I can't imagine that they don't exist, but I've only ever seen them as um, eight by tens that I found in the Lane County Museum. Um, uh, uh, otherwise, no, I wish. Did, did any of the of these cards actually have backs then or fo uh, postcard backs? The Belvedere one, the Rockefeller Ranch does. So you can find it if you look Rockefeller Ranch, it's buffaloes on the ranch. You can see that it's a double panoramic stacked on top of each other. It's a little bit of a clunky design though. So I can see why maybe it didn't take off. It's slightly odd to do it that way. But, um, but no, I've never seen a real photo double pan uh with a with a photo card back no katie clark asked uh, you, you've mentioned several times that you have a very narrow collecting interest do you collect anything else besides cards <laughs> very little basically connard because again there's three brothers so that keeps me pretty busy um bill kirsch and i do um i do some stuff that everybody likes i love i do some paper moon stuff i do some circus stuff um, I do a lot of rural Kansas um, uh, real photos if it's an interesting subject, and that's and that's basically it. Patrick, at one time when we were doing some work on the Connard booklet, uh, you were in search of the chalkware, uh, the yeah. little molded things. Did you ever find any of those? Yes. So this is a Connard thing. So guys, if you're not interested in Frank Connard, don't listen. Uh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, so I have a couple of photos that were taken uh, that were catalog photos that the Finney County Museum had. And then I've been able to gather about 50 of them um, just by comparing the photos, the catalog photos and the ones that I have. Um, since we have so many postcard collectors uh, in the room, there is a Con Art Co salt and pepper shaker for sale postcard somewhere in the world please find three so dennis morgan and i can each get one <laughs> um, there is some it's a sales card i believe it exists somewhere of all their salt and peppers and chalkware that was available with numbers to order that card does exist in some way so again please find three so dennis morgan and i don't have to fight over it Wow. I just do with a, wow. a photocopy of it. <laughs> I I have a question also. What is the the catalog, the Connard uh, catalog you mentioned? Again, are copies available? Uh, Eric Connard was my high school Spanish teacher in Manhattan, oh. and I've collected high his uh, Frank's postcards ever since. Interesting. And I I've know I know Eric. I mean, I don't know him personally. Oh, he's but, dead now. Yeah. Yeah, yes. So I, there's a archive that I went to Colorado to get, which was Eric's collection of Connard family history, which sat in a house. Where in Colorado? Oh, boy. I have to go back and look. Well, I maybe we could talk offline. Or yes. Something. Yeah. Um, and I actually have PDFs online of his family notes that I've sent out to family members that are just like handwritten notes. Um, but I, Dennis and Morgan and me in a very small way did a Connard uh, list. Yeah. I'm sh I think there are copies of available somewhere. Dennis, maybe you can chime in. Yeah, yeah I've still I'm got four yeah. or five left. In the chat, I went ahead and put a Connard booklet. You can email me. 
we've got a couple formats one's 20 and one's 25 okay well just email me, me. all me right okay. email me your details and we'll get something to you i shall do that right now thank you okay. uh hal this morgan i agree with patrick i've never seen a kirch panoramic card as a postcard that folded out there are all these very large formats I've never seen one, as you someone asked about, as a fold-out postcard. Never seen one for for Connor or for Kirch. Oh, uh, can I make one qualification there, Morgan, which I can send you a copy of? I have one folded panoramic of the of the municipal pool in Garden City that's a Connor, mm -hmm. which may have been taken by uh, by Bill Kirch. So I don't know. Let me dig back and I'll send you a picture. We can. Talk offline. So was it printed or a real photo? No, it's a real photo, and it is a folded panoramic of the pool. So let me. I'm just so sitting here thinking about that. I think I may have that. So Morgan, I'll I'll send you a picture, uh, email. Sounds cool. Well, we do thank you, Patrick, for uh, working us into your schedule and sharing this kind of information that goodness knows we'd never know otherwise. So. Thank you very, very much. Okay, thank you everybody, so long.